take a look at this. This is a NAD 7020 receiver. Not a bad looking receiver. So I do have a station tuned in here. You see it's in FM stereo. 95.1. Listen to this. That's the volume turned all the way up. AM is the exact same way. Take a look at the inside of this thing. What a mess. Oh my gosh. Look at this thing. Wires everywhere. Nothing is laid out logically whatsoever. It does have some beefy transistors down there. MJ2955s and 2N3055 complementary pairs. This thing is only rated at 20 watts per channel, but look at the size of that power transformer. It's definitely underrated. There's the power supply board back there with the big filter caps on it. But listen to this. So if I reach around and I touch the pre-out and main ends, That tells me the power amp's working fine. Big old open gang tuning cap. Two sections for AM, three for FM. But just what a mess this thing is. One huge circuit board with just Random parts scattered everywhere. Oh my goodness. Anyhow, this thing was donated. I thought I'd look at it and see what might be going on. I've already cycled all the switches just in case one of them was oxidized and I get nothing. I've worked the selector back and forth multiple times. Still nothing. I've cycled the switches on the back. Absolutely nothing. But like I said, if you go ahead and you touch the pre-out and main in jumpers, I get audio. Hard to see. Well, it's a shutter update rate, but I do have an MP3 play-in. Same exact results. Let's go ahead and plug the MP3 player into the main input and see if we get audio that way. Well, I get very distorted audio. So I'm thinking power supply at this point. So if I turn the volume down, it's fine. But once I get up to probably not even a half a watt audio output, it's just totally distorted. So I was thinking a preamp or muting problem, but now I'm thinking a main power supply. So we'll dive into this thing and see if we can figure out what might be going on with it. So I'm just doing this handheld for the moment but I'm on the collector of one of the two outputs, the positive, the 2N3055, and I have a very good positive voltage. Now I go on the negative side. It's not fluctuating by more than one one hundredth of a volt. So it's not main power amp power supply problems, but maybe a preamp power supply. Let me try to find a schematic and we'll go even deeper. Okay, so here is a schematic of the preamp and the power amplifier circuits. So right now, I have my MP3 player connected to the normal input right here and right here. So immediately, I'm suspecting the 29.3 volt source, the minus 26 volt source. 
and they come from the power supply right here. So we need to look at this minus 26 and the plus 29.3 and find out are they doing what they're supposed to be doing. Could we just have a blown fuse? F3, F4? Possibly. So we know that F5 and F6 have got to be okay because the power amplifier is getting power no problem. So let's check F4 and F3 first. Okay, so the fuses are buried right down in here. So I have my voltmeter on AC volts. And so I want to see the same AC volts on both sides of the fuses. And I do. So it's definitely not a blown fuse. Okay, so looking at this capacitor, C809. On the negative side, I should have negative 26 volts. Might be hard to see, but here is C809. This is the negative side. I have negative 0.7 volts. That is the problem. I am missing the negative 26 volt power supply. So here is Q804, the transistor in question. The base, the collector, and the emitter. So the power is off right now. I've got my voltmeter in DC volts on the 60 volt range. Let's power the unit up. Let's take a look at the collector. I expect to see 35 to 40 volts, and I see 39.6. That's perfectly fine. Now the base, I should expect to see around 26 volts, and I see negative 1.3. I should see negative 26. And the emitter, I see negative 0.75. That is the problem, but it's not being driven. That's the problem. I need to see close to negative 26 volts right here. So let's go ahead and look at Q801. That's the positive output regulator. And that one lives right here. So on the emitter, I should see about 40 volts, 39.5. On the base, I should see close to 26. Let's see, that was a 29 volt output. So I should see about 29 volts on the base. I see 14.4 and the collector, the exact same voltage, 14.4 jumping around. Let's do an ohmmeter test on that transistor. Let me kill the power and let's just check ohms from base to collector. I see 0.7 ohms. That may be the culprit right there. Let's hit the test button and see what we get. Pins one to two, 21.5 K and pins two to three, 0.17 ohms. That is definitely a problem. All right, transistor is replaced. Let's go ahead and take a look first at the emitter voltage. Should have about 40 volts and I've got 38.5, close enough. And now the collector, does it have 29 volts? Well, 28.1, that's close enough in my book. Now down here to the negative regulator. Look at the collector, once again, I should have 40 volts, negative, and I do. Now looking at the emitter, I should have negative 26 and I still only have negative 0.77. What could be going on here? So here's the transistor that I replaced. It was shorted base to collector. That got back my 29 volt source, well 28 volts. That's close enough in my book once again. I'm still not getting anything down here. And I noticed there's a resistor divider network right here. So I've got a 39K and then a 33K. So I think they designed this so with the negative 26 and the positive 29, we'd get close to zero volts right here when it's operating correctly. So with this being close to zero and this divider network, I would expect to see almost half of the 29 volts at this point. So probably about 13 or 14 volts right here. So let's take a look at that junction between R809 and R810 and see what we've got right here. We should have about 14 volts. And I think they did that to turn this circuit on to get it to start regulating. Once it starts to regulate, then the divider changes and it just based on the resistor values and the divider network regulates it to just slightly less than this output on the negative side. So let's take a look and see if we indeed have about 13 or 14 volts on this point right here on the side of R806 and the positive of C807. So between these two points is R809. I should have about negative 29 volts on one side and I'd expect to see about 13 volts on the other side, but I see negative 0.7 volts. So is it just simply that resistor is open? Let's go ahead and take it out of the circuit and see what it measures. Well, instead of using the ohmmeter, I'll go ahead and use the MK168 because it does measure resistors as well. And it reads 38.5K. So I'm suspecting more and more that this capacitor right here, C807, is shorted. Let's go ahead and find it, remove it, and give it a test as well. 
All right, C807 is out. Let's give it a test. See if it checks like a capacitor or a resistor. 64 ohms. That is the problem. Let's go ahead and throw another one in it. Okay, power's on. I got my little MP3 player connected up here. Let's hit play. Turn up the volume on it. I would say that's it. So I still have the pre-jumpers out of the unit. So I'll go ahead and install those back in. Preamp jumpers are connected to the main end. MP3 player hooked up, power on. Let's hit play. And look at that, I've got audio. Working absolutely perfect. Well, since this is mine, it was donated to me. I'm just gonna go ahead and give a quick shot of Deoxit D5 to all the pots and switches, put it back together and stick it on the shelf, maybe put it out in the garage. I don't know, I'll find a use for it somewhere. I do need to go ahead and replace this incandescent lamp down in here. I'm not sure if this wire nuts factory and then these just twisted together. I think somebody changed it at one point in its life, but I might put an LED in there, I'm not sure, but I'll handle that. Anyhow, it's up and running, the NAD. 7020, back on the road again. Out of the recycle bin, ready to go. Sounds good. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on the repair of the NAD 7020. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me, norcal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Yeah, everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.